guys, I wanted to give you some tips on when to apply paint. So a lot of you asked me like, how is that ratio of water and paint that I have on my brush? So that's one thing. But it's also about timing when to apply the paint over a wet surface. So there's different stages. So first stage starts like when you apply that water uh, over the paper. So this is about painting wet on wet and achieving softer effects, softer lines. So yes, it's about having that ratio of half and half like ratio of uh, water and paint on your brush but also when you start painting. So let me just actually demonstrate right away. So I have this brush, this is one and a half inch uh, brush, flat brush uh, by Princeton Heritage Series. I'm just going to wet the entire paper. I'm going to show you examples. So first thing, I'm going to wet it. And normally when we paint a landscape, I say wet it for about two, three minutes. So this way you get deep into that paper. Uh, the paper stays wet longer and you can actually paint that background or sky, whatever you're painting uh, while the paper is still wet. So I'm just going to take my time, I guess, um, since I'm going to demonstrate you different, uh, applying the paint at different stage. So how you can achieve that nice and soft effect. And here's actually the example. So I just finished painting this cat and parts of it are really soft like here. And like this is all like a harder edge because I left that area to stay white. But we have a lot of those softer edges. So here like a soft stroke line and that's how it dried. I let it dry to be soft and then over the face. So this is when I say half and half like ratio, but it's also about the timing uh, because the paper is drying. So basically for that paint uh, to spread immediately, we all know like it's like as soon as you wet the paper and you start painting. So let me just wet it for a few more seconds here. I think this is good. So now I'm just going to grab a round brush. This is a round brush size 12, also Heritage Series by Princeton. I'm going to dip my brush in water, wipe it slightly on a towel. I still have to dilute my paint with water. I didn't do that. Um, at this moment, like it doesn't matter what colors I'm going to grab. This is to demonstrate strokes over a wet surface. So I'm just going to dilute these blues. This is basically phthalo blue, red shade. There's a little bit of a cobalt blue. So this is the moment that I normally start uh, to paint. So basically like right away, but as I proceed, as I keep adding colors, the water uh, that's on this paper, uh, it just becomes less and less shiny. So as you see, like right now it's super shiny. It's still shiny because I just applied that water. So this is freshly applied water, right? So it's still shiny and this is what happens. So the stroke is still nice and controllable and it's pretty defined, right? So even like, okay, I have all this water, but it's also about how much water you have. So I applied that water over the surface. I didn't have like any water sitting on top of the paper. That's very important. Still though, the paint keeps moving because I am applying this paint. So I created this stroke over a freshly wetted paper. So in a second, we just have to wait a little bit uh, until the water sinks in a little more and becomes a little less shiny. So the paper will be still wet, but it won't be like this. So for now, this is my first stroke. And as you see, the paint is still wants to keep moving and moving. Um, another thing, of course, I have to note that, that I am using Holbein watercolors and Holbein as a brand doesn't add oxgall to their paints. So it's much easier to control the watercolors. They don't spread as fast as Schmincke watercolors, for example. But I can show this to you as well with other brands. So just so you guys see, uh, because not everybody's painting with Holbein watercolors and that's totally okay. Um, so I do have this advantage uh, that the paint just from the start doesn't spread as much. But I'm waiting for this uh, paper to dry a little bit so that shine goes away to show you uh, another stroke. So still soft edge, it will still dry with that soft edge. 
So we just have to wait a minute, about a minute. So I'm just going to pause for a second. In the meantime, as I'm waiting for this to dry a bit more, I grabbed a different set of watercolors. This is Rembrandt. So I'm just going to grab a different color. So just so you guys see, I just want you to see that difference. And my watercolors got glued to this uh, palette, unfortunately. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna work on this later. So for now, I'm gonna take care of the colors that I have here. So this brush has Holbein watercolors. I'm going to grab a different brush, dip my brush in water. I'm just going to grab like some of those blues. So the paper is still shiny. So I still have that time to do this. I'm gonna grab uh, water from a different jar just to, not to mix these uh, watercolors. You can mix watercolors just so you guys know from different brands. So I'm pre-mixing some of this uh, color. This is looks like an ultramarine uh, blue with some of the Maybe another shade of ultramarine. I don't know these watercolors well. This is Rembrandt. So right next to it is the watercolor by Rembrandt. So here's the thing though. The water has settled a bit, so the paint doesn't spread as fast, okay? But let's see, I'm going to go back. So this is the Holbein brush. I'm going to show you another stroke since so the, the water is sinking in there. Okay, and that is stroke, right? That will this will dry softly because the surface of the paper is still wet. So I'm gonna do this stroke right over here in the middle. So this one will be more defined. And why is that? Because I let that paper to dry a little bit longer. So this was my first stroke. And as you see, the paint keeps spreading and spreading. It's still controllable and it's kind of stayed in one space, like that one area. This is with Rembrandt watercolors. So I still have some control here. Um, the, pa the paper already dried a bit. It's still wet. I can still see that shine, but it's not everywhere. So just so you guys see that this is with whole wine. This is with Rembrandt. Now I'm going to create the same line right next to Holbein with Rembrandt watercolor. So this is the smaller brush that I use for Rembrandt paint and I'm grabbing a little more color and right next to Holbein here's another stroke. I didn't um, dilute this paint as much though with water so it's a little more concentrated. So I'm just gonna show you uh, one more time somewhere here. Uh, once the water settles a little more and I can see that the shine is disappearing here. So the strokes are going to be way nicer and more defined here. And the thing is that the paint will dry smoothly. And that's the whole point of this tutorial, to show you um, when what happens when you apply the paint at different stages of that paper drying. So especially when we paint animals, I think this is very, very important because we can do a lot of work wet on wet. A lot of work can be done wet on wet. We don't have to uh, paint the, the animal wet on dry. This is the thing, you can still have a lot of control when you paint wet on wet. Because generally we go for wet on dry to have more control and of course to have the hard edges and stuff like that. But it's easier to paint wet on dry. But I prefer wet on wet. It's just, it looks nicer and it's softer. So I can see this water is really drawing over here. So it's drawing. So I do need a little more paint from my Holbein set. So I'm gonna put the Rembrandt one on the side and I'm gonna get a little bit more of the neutral tint, just a little bit. And here I have the cobalt blue. So just to keep it same kind of color. And now I'm going to dilute some of this paint with water. This is going to be half and half like ratio, okay? So half and half like ratio. I do need a little more water here. So now I'm going to create a third stroke. And this is on a, a still wet surface. So the surface of the paper is still wet, but you don't see that shine anymore. So this is how much more defined this stroke will be. Now your stroke will not be this defined 
if you use too much water mixed in with your paint. So that's another thing you need to keep an eye on. And it does need to be more like a half and half like ratio. The paint is still spreading. Um, so the four times, let's say I do it somewhere in the bottom, you will see a big difference. So for now, this is to compare to this one from the beginning when the paper was completely wet. And this is uh, when the paint, the water has settled. And this is the brush for the um, Rembrandt watercolors. So I'm just going to grab more of that. I think this is more like a violet. So it's not just the ultramarine, like I said earlier. It has like a violet color to it. So a little more paint. This is more like a um, half and half like ratio. And now you can see how defined the stroke is. And the thing is that it will still dry, dry smoothly. Now here, the paper is almost dry. So I almost did like a dry brushing here. So let's focus on this part here because this is um, still wet, the paper is still wet. And uh, we can see the difference now, okay? So one more time, because the paper just lost its shine on the bottom. One more time, so Holbein watercolors. So hold my watercolors right here. I'm doing like a uh, creating a thinner line this time because I don't have much room anymore. And then Rembrandt. So I'm going back to that to get some more of that Rembrandt. And it's going to be a thinner line too because I don't have much space. The paper is still wet, okay? The paper is still wet. And how can you tell? Just by looking at it. So the sides are still spreading a little bit but the strokes are so defined and I will have a soft edge to it. So this is another thing like, okay, now you have the comparison of um, what happens when you apply the paint to almost dry paper and you don't want that hard edge. So this is the way to go. And then if you really want it to be soft and more diluted, then you go like right from the start, as soon as the paper is wet, this is when you apply the paint. Then when you wait a little longer uh, until that water settles, starts to settling a bit more. And then the third version is um, more controlled. So the water has gotten really deep into that paper and it kind of stopped being shiny. And then this is when there's no more shine, no more shine over the paper. And these are my strokes, so pretty much defined. It's so funny because now I have Holbein watercolors on this size 12 brush and then size 10 has Rembrandt. It almost looks as Rembrandt is more controllable, right? Because the strokes are like so much uh, more defined in a way. It's interesting. Um, but anyway, so that's the comparison here. And um, you can practice this as much as you want to. I'd say practice, practice, because it really helps, especially when we paint animals in watercolors. So one more time, I'm going to actually use these uh, brushes to show you the difference, but this time on a dry paper. And here's another sheet of a watercolor paper. This is Hannah Mulligan collection called Pressed. And I'm going to grab uh, the same colors. So now we're just going to create hard edges because we're gonna paint wet on dry. So this is wet on dry. This is uh, half and half like ratio. That's why there's a little bit of dry brushing on sides. So just so you have this comparison to the wet on the wet technique, I guess, because this is when we are getting the hard edges and then this brush, so size 10 is going for the Rembrandt colors. So I have some of that violent and ultramarine like blue. A little more water because otherwise it's too thick. They are really nice watercolors I noticed. I do like the Rembrandt. I just have not had the time to paint much with them. So this is another stroke, but this time it's wet on dry. And this is more like a half and half like ratio. And now I'm going to dilute more with water to paint. So this is Holbein. This is more like a milk like ratio, but I need a little more color there as I dip my brush in water. So this is more like a milk like ratio. And then back to Rembrandt, I need to get some of that milk-like ratio. It's a little harder because I have the uh, aluminum palette. So I'm going to dilute it on the side. And then this is the milk-like ratio. Okay, so this is milk-like ratio. And then we're just going to the transparent side. So this is going to be water-like ratio. I got to start with Holbein here. 
So water like ratio, so way more water. So let's go here. This is water like ratio, a little more water here. There you go. Just so it becomes more transparent for you guys. And then water for this one to do water like ratio for the Rembrandt. It was so random because I have all these paints uh, in a container. I was actually aiming for a schminke, but I found these, these ones. So now we have the version went on dry. Uh, so we have the whole buy Rembrandt and then we have the half and half like ratio, milk like ratio and more transparent water like ratio, although I didn't do a good job diluting the paint. So let me try it one more time. Just dilute more uh, with water. So it's really transparent. So the value of this color mix is very light and the same thing with the Rembrandt watercolors. So I don't know how much more transparent it will be. Let's see. These are really vibrant watercolors or the pigments. So I'm going to rinse my brush in water here. So this was for Holbein. This is for Rembrandt rinsing. And this is the another example. And my wet on wet is still drying, but you can definitely see what happens and there's a difference in it. So again, this is like, this is when I do start painting, especially the animals. So I start from like right away when the paper is uh, freshly wetted. And this is what I achieve here. And then sometimes I get really nice and fine strokes, especially when I paint like some parts of that cat that have uh, stripes on it so that's when I will use this kind of ratio but also uh, the paint the water has settled already on that fur so or around that fur area and that's when I paint these stripes so when the the area is kind of still wet ish right so these are the two examples thank you so much guys i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it helps you a bit uh, to understand better the ratios between water and paint but also uh, about like wetting the surface of your paper thanks guys